welcome everyone to the webinar future toggle promotion via ci cd pipeline by nilesh mewada and naresh jain without further delay over to you guys now over to you naresh all right uh good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you folks are joining in from thanks for uh tuning in on a saturday or a friday night uh it's a, it's a real pleasure to be presenting here with you uh, I have my colleague and the, the man behind uh, the whole pizza toggle stuff, uh, Nilesh. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the session. Uh, thanks for joining. Cool. So the way we're going to split this is uh, I'm going to do the initial overview, then we'll jump into a demo, then I'll do some more uh, overview, then uh, Nilesh will jump into a demo. So we will uh, swap between us, uh, between the overview and the demo sections. Uh, before we get started, uh, you know, if uh, I just want to see how many people in the audience here are familiar with uh, or are using regularly feature toggles. Uh, if you can just uh, put your hand up, uh, just use the raise hand. Uh, it will give me a sense of how many people are familiar with feature toggles and then we can pace our session accordingly. So you can use the raise hand uh, option uh, if you are familiar with uh, feature toggles. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I, is it a fair assumption that uh, majority of you are uh, kind of new to this topic and would like us to cover a little bit more basics? If if you agree with with that you can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat as well yeah okay so i'm seeing few folks uh, in the chat uh, saying i've heard about it but uh, you know uh, not used it it would be good uh, it's a new topic all right so in that case uh, change of plan nilesh <laughs> we're going to try and uh, do a little bit more basics, but of course we will try and cover the core of the topic because that is also equally important. Uh, all right, so I'm going to quickly share my screen here. Uh, and uh, let's jump to this and... Uh, all right, so we're going to jump straight in. Uh, feature toggles promotion using CI/CD pipeline, uh, and the big claim that we want to make here is basically uh, the death of release bundles uh, and uh, you know independent deployments is is the uh, or independent releases is the way forward. Uh, so let me quickly touch upon why feature toggles, right? Why feature toggles are important. And today, uh, if you are uh, trying to embrace continuous deployment and you're trying to move towards, uh, I think some of our keynote speakers talked about uh, how you know some of the companies are releasing code to production every second, you know, uh, and you know how is that possible? Uh, so I think one of the secret sauce behind that speed and agility uh, to me is the core concept of feature toggles. So feature toggles allow us to do independent deployments. What do we mean by independent deployments? Let's say in a typical uh, you know service oriented architecture where you have a set of microservices and a set of uh, micro front ends. Uh, different teams or the same team is working on these and as and when your services are ready or micro front ends are ready, you want to start deploying them uh, to production so that the teams can kind of, uh, you know, practice trunk based development and other good practices. And also, you know, they are not waiting and you don't have this complex maze of uh, coordinating between different people and getting all the jigsaw puzzle in place before you can start uh, deploying things, right? You want the ability to decouple uh, your deployments and as and when each uh, service or microservice or micro front end is ready, you would like to deploy it, right? And so feature toggles is a essential ingredient to be able to do that. Of course, uh, it is not the only way to do it. Uh, so, you know, I just want to make sure I put that disclaimer that feature toggles is not a silver bullet. It's not going to solve world hunger and climate change. But uh, if you're trying to do independent deployment, and especially if you have uh, 
changes that are not backward compatible, uh, then feature toggles become uh, kind of essential from an independent deployment point of view. Uh, it also helps you separate your uh, you know deployments and releases so you could keep deploying frequently, but when all the pieces are there, then you can actually release or make that feature available. You could also use uh, some of these feature toggling techniques for advanced concepts like A-B testing for canary releases, for gradual rollout, uh, and so forth. Uh, and the most important thing from a measurement point of view is uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, the DORA metric of uh, change lead time. So if you're trying to reduce your change lead time, which basically means from the time developers are done to the time it is a feature is actually available in production. Uh, you know, if you're really trying to automate your entire pipelines and you're trying to optimize for speed to delivery, uh, then reducing CLT, the change lead time becomes an essential aspect. And, you know, uh, this is kind of how we've been uh, focusing with uh, several of our uh, projects in terms of uh, trying to, uh, you know, reduce the CLT using feature toggles and independent deployments. So that's the why, right? Like I've just put the why this is important and why we need to pay attention to this. Uh, let's uh, start with an example. So we are all on the same page and we are talking, uh, you know, on, uh, from the same uh, angle, right? So let's think of a typical e-commerce company, all right? Uh, it's built the product, you can buy the product online, et cetera. But so far in its the evolution of this e-commerce company, it did not support customers to cancel the orders. Okay, now the business feels that, hey, you know, the ability to cancel orders is important. Uh, however, we want to only allow uh, the orders to be canceled before they are dispatched. Uh, and if someone's prepaid for the order, then on cancellation, we need to issue a refund back to the user. Uh, and upon cancellation, we also need to adjust the inventory accordingly, right? We need to increase the inventory in this case when on cancellation. So all of these things need to be handled as part of this particular feature, which is the order cancellation feature. Uh, now, you know, in a typical way you might say, hey, I need to get all of these things in place before I can release this feature or before even I can deploy this feature out, right? But how with continuous, uh, if you're trying to practice continuous deployment and then how you could use feature toggles as a way to, uh, you know, release this. So first let's look at the current state, okay? Uh, the current state is you have an app through which people are ordering, uh, you know, that basically then calls an order service uh, in the background. This order service talks to an inventory service, and then this inventory service talks to a bunch of other services. And that's kind of how, uh, you know, it will respond back with basically uh, what was the, uh, what are the available orders and uh, what are the available inventories. And then that goes back into the available orders, uh, you know, with the statuses in terms of out of deliver, out for delivery, uh, it's confirmed, et cetera. Uh, this is the current state, and we would like to change this current state uh, to uh, something where you should be able to cancel the orders, right? So let's look at what the new state should look like. Uh, so here, the app is going to uh, check with the order service just like before. The order service now is going to check with a feature toggling system. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using Feature Hub for today. Uh, so Feature Hub is a feature toggling system. I'll talk a little bit about this, uh, but it'll talk to a feature uh, toggling system and it'll check whether cancellations are enabled or disabled. Okay, let's assume cancellation is enabled. Then it uh, and and the the system that is actually the service that is checking with your toggling system, uh, your feature toggling system we call that as the decider component i'll come back to uh, this concept of decider component because that is extremely important in uh, your ability to be able to do continuous deployment as part of the pipeline uh, but yeah we have the order service which we are calling as the decider component it checks with feature hub uh, checks whether this particular feature is enabled feature hub says yes this feature is enabled now you might call a slightly different version of the inventory service okay and then you, uh, it will do it whatever it used to do before. Uh, you're going to respond back, and you will notice now that you are responding back with a cancelable true or false uh, option as well. Uh, and this change has happened because your, uh, you know, 
the the flag uh, for enabling cancellation is turned on. Uh, if this flag was turned off, then it would not return the cancelable uh, parameter back. Okay. Now, what this allows you to do is this now allows you to decouple each of these pieces. Each of these services now could independently be deployed, including your front end, right? How, how could you release your app? You could, you know, basically if the app was done first before the order service was ready, the app could assume that, you know, if cancelable is part of the response, then it will show the cancel uh, button against it. If it is not available, then it will simply not show the cancelable uh, field at all. Right. Uh, and so this way, uh, and, and if that the field even does not exist, then it assumes it's as, as false, like the false is the default state. Uh, so now if the app was ready, you could actually just release the app. Uh, whenever the order service is ready, you could release the order service. Of course, as part of this, you also need to now uh, build out a new service, which did not exist before. For example, you wanted to build a refund service. If the refund service is available because it's a new thing that it was the last thing to be enabled, then you would add that later. And till that point, you would have cancelable as false. So everything works as before. Uh, only when, let's say, the uh, refund service is available, you will then go and turn on this cancelable flag. And that is what will enable, uh, you know, the changes also in the inventory service and so forth. Uh, so this is kind of a quick, just a high level concept in terms of if you move towards uh, independent deployment and you want to use feature toggles, how you can start decoupling the releases of, or, or rather the deployments of each of these uh, components uh, out of order, right? They can go uh, in any order uh, and you could control what is visible or what is the impact uh, to the user through a feature toggling system. So, uh, and, and and the and the the service that or the component that is actually controlling this decision factor, we generally uh, that, that's that's called the decider component, would be the one that uh, essentially we will see later on how that orchestrates the uh, toggle through the CI/CD process. All right. Uh, now with that, I think enough of talking. Let's uh, request Nilesh to quickly uh, share his screen and uh, you know show a demo of what I just explained, uh, so that everyone can uh, be on the same page. So far, uh, did this make sense? Just a quick uh, yes, no, thumbs up, whatever, uh, just so that I know I've uh, got the basic concept through. Perfect. Okay. Cool. All right, Nilesh, over to you for a quick demo. Uh, thanks. Okay, thanks, Nilesh. Uh, so I'll quickly share my screen. I'll be going to take it over. Just give me a minute. Uh, and sharing. So what we saw just now is that we, uh, so Nilesh already talked about the scenario, right? So we talked about that, whether the, uh, the clients, you know, whenever they're deploying, they're waiting on the toggle. And without deployment, we can basically enable or disable the feature, which is like a very powerful thing to do. Uh, now, uh, you know, uh, this is the system, you know, we were talking about Feature Hub, that's the open source platform that we're using for the toggle. What I've done is, uh, so these are the list of toggles. Out of that, uh, you know, there is one toggle, which is called Enable Cancellation that, you know, Naresh was talking about just a while back. Uh, uh, this has been configured in the front end side so the front end is basically waiting for this toggle uh, so uh, you know as you mentioned if the uh, order status is basically dispatched uh, uh, then you know the cancellation is essentially not available but if it is not dispatched and if the toggle is enabled then uh, this new feature should allow the cancellation to be available to the end users so uh, so front end is basically depending on that feature to be visible to end users. At the same time, let me quickly show uh, the uh, back end as well. So here is a back end as well. Uh, on the back end side, once again, you know we are just you know uh, when the cancellation is you know uh, right now this has been disabled as we can see uh, in, in in the screen. Uh, one second. Yeah. So this has been turned off right now. So since it is turned off, basically the cancellation is not available to the end users right now. And that feature is not available. Now what we do is we just you know try to switch it on, right? 
uh, in production and immediately we will see that the thing the feature will be available to the end users so now it has been turned on as you can see uh, in the app you immediately see the reflection of that and you know as we expected you know uh, there are few items which has been not dispatched and since the toggle that feature is available we are uh, enabling that cancellation to the end users uh, similarly if we if i make a call once again we see the exact same effect the the feature which was not available to the users uh, to initially consume at all that is now you know responding as whether you know the cancellation is allowed or not based on whether it was dispatched or not uh, and you know accordingly it will reflect the status right any any questions cool i think uh narish can we yeah, you know start with the promotion then i think cool uh all right thanks nilesh uh, i think there's one quick question here in the audience let me see if uh, you know is that cancel enable disable uh, is auto handled by uh, feature hub uh, so basically what happens is that, uh, you know, and I'll explain the architecture of Feature Hub in a second. So some of this will become a little bit more clear. Let me quickly share my screen. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. So that was just a quick demo that Nilesh showed uh, of Feature Toggle. Uh, so what, what here, uh, I think Nilesh already mentioned that we're using this open source uh, project that Richard and Irina, uh, two uh, you know, awesome folks uh, from New Zealand. So a quick call out to uh, Richard and Irina for building Feature Hub and open sourcing it. This is, this is a platform that we are using and we'll deep dive into it. I'll also explain why we ended up on this platform and what happened, but uh, featurehub.io is the URL. You can go, it's a free open source tool uh, that allows you to do uh, feature toggles and a lot more things, including AB experimentation and so forth. Uh, you know, it's important to just quickly explain the architecture so everyone uh, understands what was going on when Nilesh was demoing things. Uh, so here you will see where you are seeing, uh, let me get my uh, highlighter or uh, laser pointer. So you, you'll see here, uh, you know, what Nilesh was doing is he was interacting with the Feature Hub web application uh, from where he was turning on and off the feature. The moment he turned on the feature, what essentially happens is obviously goes and sits in the database, but it also then, uh, you know, changes the value uh, through Nats, a component that is there, and then it kind of uh, kicks into uh, the cache. Uh, which is called Dacha. And then from there, it's available through an Edge API. Now, the Edge API uh, is, is, is kind of your, uh, you know, API gateway in, in some sense, which is essentially uh, talking to the cache and has all the values uh, that uh, of your feature toggles. Now, uh, Feature Hub also provides you SDKs, uh, both for like several languages, we'll talk about that. And what they do is essentially they uh, establish a, uh, you know, uh, SSE uh, server-side event. Uh, so they register for a server-side event with the edge. And anytime uh, someone changes this value, uh, it obviously propagates through the cache, comes to the edge and the edge notifies the SDK saying, hey, you know, there's a new value. And that's how you saw that without refreshing the page, uh, you know, the, the cancel button were automatically visible. And all of this is happening because the SDK that they provide is talking to the edge and is listening to server-side events. And so whenever you toggle things, it's readily available and the UI can get uh, reflected. Uh, same thing on the backend as well. So both for backend and frontend. Uh, plus also you they provide REST APIs. Uh, so you can uh, query the edge uh, API uh, through REST and get that. So I think it's a pretty neatly architected system, quite uh, scalable. We'll come to that in a minute, but uh, they provide a huge variety of uh, SDK is already out of the box. Uh, pretty much all popular languages are uh, available as part of the SDKs. Uh, they have a lot of uh, 
interesting features and stuff like that. Again, I'm not going to go too much into it, but just highlighting uh, some of the things because a few folks said they're new. Uh, performance when it comes to this, because this is going to sit on your critical path. Uh, performance becomes important. So we actually did quite a bit of uh, independent performance testing around this, uh, you know, trying to scale it up to about 300 concurrent connections. And we saw that it was basically very smoothly just scaling out uh, on a fairly uh, commodity hardware, uh, right? And, uh, you know, with 200 concurrent users, we could go up to 129 RPS. Uh, with 300 concurrent users, we were almost up to 1600 RPS. And oh, another important thing to notice is only the edge is uh, one where the CPU and memory is actually utilized, but the rest of the things is barely using anything, right? So uh, the, 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 it's, its architecture, also deployment architecture, allows you to auto-scale the edge servers, and uh, which is where uh, you would hit most of the traffic. Uh, so it's a pretty neat, uh, you know, uh, what I would say, cloud native uh, way of uh, building feature toggles. Uh, we did comparison with a whole bunch of different uh, tools that are available, including a homegrown solution that we had. And then eventually, uh, I think Feature Hub seemed to uh, kind of uh, tick all the boxes that we had. Uh, again, the comparison itself could probably be a whole new talk in itself, uh, because there's a lot of interesting aspects that one needs to look at in terms of, uh, you know, uh, which platform to go with, uh, various uh, options from infra to toggle value categories, different kinds of targeting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but anyway, this is not the session for the feature comparison. Just wanted to highlight that uh, we did do our homework and then pick up uh, this particular thing. So now uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's jump into the core of the topic. Uh, I think we've taken about 20 minutes uh, so far uh, to, to kind of set the context and now we will jump into the core of the topic. But before I proceed, let me just take a quick pause here and uh, you know just quickly see. So far, is everyone with me? Does this make sense? Yeah, I'm uh, assuming everyone's with me so far. Cool. Okay, so then let me go back to sharing. And now we will jump into the uh, feature toggling. So so what is the problem statement, right? Now, uh, Nilesh showed the, the UI uh, through which you can turn on or turn off the features and it is instantly available. And of course, in any typical, uh, you know, organization, you would have multiple environments. Uh, you would have an integration environment or let's say SIT. You would have a, uh, a staging environment or a replica environment, which is similar to production. And then you would have production. At least you would have these three, maybe a dev environment as well. And what you want is basically you want, uh, you know, you, you probably would do some progression testing for a given feature. You would also do then a regression testing before you release and uh, this could be automated or manual uh, again that's a whole different topic in itself uh, but you know we, we, we all i'm trying to say is this is agnostic to how you're managing your testing it supports both uh, kinds of uh, you know continuous testing kind of a model with everything automated uh, or it could be more heavy on the manual testing or exploratory testing uh, but assuming you have different environments and in each environment you want to do certain kinds of testing. Uh, so in your integration environment, you want to uh, test out uh, that the feature integrated with all the other systems is working as expected. You may want to then put it into a staging environment, get uh, some of your business folks or some of your product folks to do a UAT, and then you may want to release it into production. Uh, even in production, you may want to do a gradual rollout or canary releases, a very targeted release and so forth. Uh, but the, the key challenge when you're using a feature toggling system, uh, one is obviously the whole design and thinking in terms of decomposing your components and finding the decider component. Uh, but the other important thing is how do you automate this toggling process so that you know when someone's 
turned on certain flags in an environment in, in let's say SIT and they did regression testing and they said, yes, this all looks good. This is working fine. Now, what you want to make sure is the same set of toggles are then promoted to uh, the higher environment, let's say replica or staging uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, what was tested and certified in a lower environment is actually what is replicated in the higher environment and then all the way to production. If, uh, if you don't ensure that, then uh, you may accidentally be turning on or turning off something, uh, which means something that was not tested is now available to users uh, and that could break uh, things in production. Uh, or something that was working before is now suddenly disappeared because someone accidentally toggled it off. Uh, everyone can relate to this problem, what I'm saying uh, about why it is important to ensure that what was tested and certified in a certain environment actually gets uh, is, is kept intact and then promoted to higher environments. It's the same philosophy that we use with our code, right? When we, when we basically test uh, our artifacts, it could be a Docker image, it could be a jar, it could be whatever. We want to make sure that the same artifacts are actually promoted to higher environments and goes all the way to production. You don't want suddenly someone to give you a new artifact saying, okay, deploy this into production <laughs> because then you have no sanity uh, around uh, whether this will work or not. Correct. So the, the same thought process and the same philosophy also applies to uh, the state of these toggles uh, because you have to keep them intact and you want to make sure that they move forward. Right. So that's the key point about this uh, presentation today is how do you ensure that what toggle states, uh, feature toggle states were, uh, you know, accepted in or tested in a certain environment, they are kept intact and promoted. Uh, to higher environment. That's what we call, and that's where we want to make sure that it is part of the CI CD process, just like your configs, like your DB scripts, like your uh, uh, code. Uh, and it, it basically goes along with it through this promotion process uh, of the CI CD. Uh, so let me quickly just first run you through the whole uh, process. Uh, and then Nilesh will give you a demo on the same. All right. So the first thing uh, one needs to do is we call ft.yaml uh, feature toggle.yaml uh, file. Uh, so in the decider component that you have, you would add this new file. The developers would add this new file. They would declare the various toggles that they have, the name of the toggle, the URL to where this feature, uh, that this toggle belongs to. And what is the default value? Is it a Boolean? Is it a JSON? Is it some more complex data structures? So you can have different kinds of things. So you declare these three things for each of the feature toggle that you're introducing. Once you have that, uh, then uh, just like uh, you know, you would check in your code, uh, you would check in your ft.yaml file as well into the decider components uh, repository, Git repository. Uh, and then you would create a pull request. When you create a pull request as part of the pipeline, uh, what we first do is we validate whether the entries in the ft.yaml is valid or not. And uh, we also check with Feature Hub whether you know, if someone's duplicating an already existing fe uh, feature ID, uh, 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 toggle ID, right? Uh, because you want to make sure those are unique, uh, else you will accidentally be turning off something else. And uh, once everything is good, once you merge the uh, this thing, then the build will produce uh, the four artifacts, right? A code artifact, which could be a jar, could be a Docker image, could be something else. Uh, it produces a config artifact, which is basically all the configuration for different environments. It produces a DB uh, chain set. If you're basically doing automated DB changes, uh, you know, then you would have a DB change. And then also the feature uh, toggle uh, YAML file is also an artifact. And these all uh, get created as an artifact. Now, once you have the artifact that your build pipeline, your CI pipeline has created, then your CD or the release pipeline will pick these artifacts and essentially it will deploy these artifacts into your SID environment. And if, uh, if that is successful, then uh, there is a stage in the release pipeline, which basically syncs the toggles to feature hub. So it will basically take the ft.yaml file, find what all the toggles are in it, and then you know, basically set up uh, through an API call, will create these in feature hub. 
Uh, and then, of course, your release process will continue as normal. But at this stage, you have, uh, you know, basically taken all the new toggles or deprecated toggles and synced it up with Feature Hub. So they are available. Uh, now, once the syncing is done, then, uh, you know, either a, a set of automated tests could run or a set of manual tests could run. Uh, so you, you would go ahead and do the progression testing at this stage. During progression testing, of course, you can keep uh, toggling on and off and make sure that on state the feature is working fine, off state the feature is working fine, uh, because you want to make sure both on and off testing is done. Uh, and uh, you, you play around with this. But before you start your actual regression testing, where you are basically saying, hey, this is good to go, uh, you just need to make sure that whatever state you want to promote uh, the toggles to to the next environment, you set that uh, before the regression testing starts. And once you've established that in the feature hub, then you would uh, kick off your regression testing. And at this stage, when you, when you basically say, hey, I'm about to kick off my regression testing, uh, what we do is we basically uh, put a marker in feature hub saying, hey, we are about to kick off. So basically uh, take a snapshot of the uh, of the toggles now and this snapshot is also saved in uh, in our case we using azure devops uh, it could be any other uh, platform uh, it'll basically st uh, store this snapshot against the feature in in uh, in azure devops for later references uh, then you start your regression testing, you do your regression testing as normal. Uh, if there are uh, no bugs uh, found in the regression testing, uh, then essentially you would say, hey, I'm good. I'm about to finish my regression testing. I'm going to give a sign off on my regression testing. And at this stage, what we do is we basically, during the sign off, we verify with Feature Hub whether uh, what we started uh, in terms of the toggle state, whether they remained intact, whether you know during regression testing, people did not go and play around with the toggles because then you lose uh, sanctity, whether something should be on or off in the production, right? Uh, so we basically verify that no toggle state changes were made. Uh, we again take a snapshot of that and we store it. So a before and after snapshot is stored for later references. Uh, this is again to ensure that during regression testing, when you're supposed to not be playing around with the toggles, everything is fine because you set everything in a particular state, uh, which is ready to move forward to the next environment. At that stage, you want to basically do a regression test. This could again be a completely automated process. In some teams, we do that. In some teams, it is not fully automated. So you do it manually. Uh, both ways, it works fine. And this is when you would start deployment to the next environment. Once the sign off is given, then the deployment to the next environment gets kicked off. And uh, pretty much the same process will continue. Uh, I'm going to jump through some of this. You would do the UAT. And finally, once the UAT is successful, you would basically deploy to production. And at this stage, you would take the the you know the snapshot that was captured and just promote that to production so this ensures that you are keeping everything intact and not mucking around with the toggle states uh, and this is a completely automated process without any manual intervention no one's going to the ui and changing things uh, you know uh, once you've given the sign off so once you've given the sign off everything is fully automated from there before the sign off you may want to play around with different states on off states and validate so that's perfectly fine but once you give a sign off then uh, the snapshot is promoted through the pipeline just like any other artifact is promoted and goes all the way to production so that is a quick run through of uh, something that we've uh, spent many months thinking through and trying to come up. And now we have this fairly successfully running in several production pipelines. Uh, but I'll quickly pause here and see uh, so far if this is making sense. Uh, if, if everyone is good so far, then at this stage, uh, we can jump in and have uh, Nilesh kind of uh, quickly give you a live demo of how this is in action. But before Nilesh jumps in, let's quickly take a pause. Uh, everyone with me understand uh, why it's important to make sure that uh, you need to uh, have the toggle state and promote them through the whole uh, pipeline process. We have one person raise the hand. I'm not sure they have any question or we can see one question in q and section. Probably we can take it later. All right, I have a question from Sharad <laughs> here, which says, do uh, 
do we not have to test with both toggle uh, states in the SIT and UAT? Uh, so generally what you do is in the SIT, you would basically do the on-off testing. Uh, you would make sure both in the on state and off state things work fine. Once you've actually verified that, then you decide what is the state that you want to promote to the next environment uh, all the way to production. Uh, and at this stage, you basically set it to a given state, right? Beyond this, you generally don't want to keep playing around uh, because if, if let's say a feature is not ready, you're only deploying uh, some components of that feature, then you want that particular feature toggle to be off. Uh, however, you would have tested both the on off state, uh, you might have done some progression testing with on, uh, but since the whole feature is not ready, uh, all the components are not available, you toggle it off, then you do a regression, make sure nothing breaking, uh, and that is the state you will promote to the higher environment. Once you go to the higher environment, you ideally don't want to keep playing around with these toggles. You want to keep them consistent. Also from a UAT point of view, they're just saying, okay, you know, maybe as part of this release train or as part of this release, we've got five features, uh, you know, five of them are, are, are fully baked in, but there may be five other features that are, you know, not fully uh, set up. Right. So if, if they're not fully set up, then they're off. But the, the from a UAT point of view, you don't care about those in process ones. And so this is why you don't turn on uh, the flag for those in in a, in a, in a UAT environment or in a, you know, in a staging environment. You just keep them off and then you proceed forward. OK. Uh, hopefully I've answered that for you, Sarat. Uh, Cool. Uh, if there are no more questions, then uh, over to Nilesh for the magic. And uh, hopefully the demo gods are with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, OK, I'll quickly share the screen. There are lots to show, and we just have about a few minutes. So I'll try to be a little fast. Well, Naresh has already mentioned a lot of things anyway. so. Uh, so let's let's start from the beginning, okay? So what we are going to do is we have about so this is what you see on the screen right now is basically the uh, you know current state uh, of the toggles in into the system, okay? What we are going to do is we are going to add few toggles uh, into the system. So as you know, Naresh mentioned a while back, uh, you know we have this ft.yaml which is baked in and we are basically declaring that okay there are some few uh, there are few toggles that are you know going into the system now as part of this release so he also mentioned about the atomic release means that uh, you know whenever this code goes and the configuration goes or whatever the the db scripts uh, goes along with it uh, you know together as a bunch this thing basically uh, is promoted in the pipeline and goes to the production right uh, that's how it makes it, uh, you know, an atomic release in that sense. So let's say we are uh, trying to deploy this now. Uh, so these are the uh, toggles that we have declared now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly, you know, uh, queue a build to this. And, you know, the one step that he mentioned was that uh, during the build process, we basically checked whether you know the all the entries are uh, which is defined into ft.yaml is proper or not etc so let's you know see it in action so right now uh, so build has kicked in and it is basically trying to figure out whether the ft.yaml uh, you know the three entries that we created is basically uh, you know proper uh, both from the syntax point of view and whether that basically exists within the uh, uh, existing system or not if it is a duplicate then it should basically fail and all those uh, you know normal checks are basically taken care of in this so as we see it is passed i'll quickly run through uh, you know the output ones uh, so there are a bunch of checks that it does you know uh, valid values are there uh, into the features whether the name was correct or not whether the azure url that is used uh, so if you have noticed, uh, you know, we have used the URLs over here, which is like, you know, uh, just a link to the feature that is being released and uh, to which this particular toggle maps to. So uh, why that is important, I'll just, you know, uh, get in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so it basically, and, uh, you know, checks for all these basic entries. It also checks whether there are no duplicates and stuff like that. There are a bunch of checks that is carried out. 
once that is successful you know we have this artifact ready which we need to you know release uh, along with the code uh, into the you know the respective systems like the our workflow is going to be uh, as we see over here there are like three environments so we are basically starting from sit uh, then we move to replica then we move to prod uh, replica is basically a staging sort of an environment uh, so we'll start from that uh, so let me create a release out of this particular build that was just successful right so let me get to that uh there are manual steps which i have introduced just so that uh, you know it does not quickly run through every step uh, stage at one go uh, so we'll have to you know uh, so there is some uh, preparatory stage that it is you know trying to get into post that i'll uh, till the time that it runs you know i'll quickly you know uh, you know talk about what is going to happen next so once this basically is successful uh there is this next stage that uh, narish already gave a brief about all these steps anyway but you know uh, the next step basically is about syncing those entries into sit what that is going to do is once this particular stage runs we should be able to see these new entries you know uh, popped in over here uh for you know the sit and qa uh, uh, guys to you know stay ready with and to test upon etc so let me see whether this has kicked in yeah that has been successful i'll quickly resume this operation and let's see the things in action now i'll switch on the logs as well so that we can see what's going on so now the entries are being synced uh into the environment so let's see and that has been synced now so let's see i'll just quickly refresh this screen as you can see there are just three entries that has been created you know demo 22 uh, i demo 22 so there are like uh, you know we have this entries now available to us uh, there are three entries uh, three ft.yaml entries all three of them have been created now as we can see right all are by default you know off state uh, and once uh, you know as uh, i'll just you know get back to this particular stage you know this is the stage where uh you know basically uh qa folks will start doing the progression test so they can basically you know go to the screen they can do on and off into this one and they can just check whether the feature is working fine uh that component is working fine or not uh, uh once that is through and when they are about to start the regression test right uh they will run this stage again what this is going to do is it is going to freeze uh you know this particular environment for any further modification so that nobody you know uh, you know plays around with this particular environment and uh, the essential regression the code configs uh, you know the db scripts whatever we have into sit environment that is checked with the exact state uh, you know this particular sit environment is into so uh, let me run this stage right so it's in progress uh so along with you know locking uh, so if you have noticed this three toggles right those are essentially unlocked you see this small icon over here these are like the toggles that were already in uh, earlier uh, so these three toggles are basically uh, that has been freshly created are unlocked so that you know qa can essentially do their on and off testing but the moment we start the regression right all these three toggles will be locked for any other modifications uh let's see whether that has been successful yeah the regression has been successfully done so let me refresh this screen what will happen is this uh you know entries will be locked in sit for any further modifications so as you notice all these you know entries have been locked now for any further modifications because the regression is going to start so no more uh, fiddling around with the toggles at the same time you know uh uh let me okay so there was if you see this particular entry has been created just now uh what it does is you know uh the entire snapshot of this feature toggle right of the sit environment uh it basically takes the entire snapshot that uh what was the state in which this sit environment was before starting the regression and it creates a hash around it and it basically stores it for against the feature id so that uh, you know the respective 
you know operations or release managers can have a look as in what was it initially before the regression started uh, i'll just quickly show the uh, the attachment as well what is there in the snapshot the snapshot generally consists of uh, uh, you know a json if i go to downloads and if i open a snapshot file let's open it with firefox for now so it can say it consists of the entire society environment what the particular state was uh, it was into so it was logged the state was false etc cetera, etc cetera. so that basically it gives a snapshot of that particular environment at at uh, at a given point in time uh, that was before starting the regression uh, so now, now we are at the stage where the regression is already started uh, what happens is after say if the uh, uh, the regression is automated it will basically finish within say a couple of hours uh, if it is manual then it might take a couple of days or something uh, but the moment the regression is ended right you know we can basically run a step which will basically sign off this particular stage the sign off is basically just ensuring that uh, nothing was changed uh, during this uh, you know regression phase uh, in terms of changing any stage into feature toggle although it is locked it also does another level of verification wherein it checks the version so any change that happens to the toggle uh, the version gets changed so it basically checks uh, you know that aspect as well that actually there was nothing changed uh, and once that is confirmed it gives uh, you know it verifies that yes uh, everything was fine the regression is successful uh, the confirmation of that is also once again you know provided over here uh, as you see uh i'll just you know refresh this once again so if you see uh, 3 minutes ago regression was started and there was one snapshot that was taken uh once the regression the sign off has been given uh, the sign off has been given once again the sit snapshot is taken and uh, you know we compare all the uh, toggle states uh, whether anything was changed or not with the version numbers and as you see the hash is similar that means you know nothing was changed we guarantee that Uh, so this is this guarantee is basically done in the automated fashion so that nobody has to you know individually come and check whether this was changed that was changed or not so it gives that particular assurity from that aspect uh and i think uh, we are out of time but you could quickly just uh, wrap up here yeah, please sure okay yes and at the same time uh, once the sign off is given we essentially promote those particular states so uh over here the promotion was all, uh, so initially into sit the toggles were into the off state uh, as you notice what we have to do is we have to promote that particular state into uh, you know the replica and the prod environment as well so essentially this the remaining two stages are basically about that it essentially uh, you know runs the stages and whatever diff that was there within sit and prod right Uh, if something was promoted as on it will basically you know promote that as a on uh, to replica in a production environment in the automated fashion uh, so that is what it does that is essentially uh, what this promotion process is all about uh, this is how we ensure uh, you know uh, the automation as well as you know the surety that uh, the environments are not fiddled around uh, accidentally as well all right thank you guys thank you everyone for joining the session and thanks nilesh and naresh for insightful session thank, thank you. you thanks everyone